Question 2. This question is about paper chromatography and is used to separate the uh, amino acids from the hydrolysis of tripeptides. So it means inside tripeptides, it should be uh, consists of three amino acids. It can be same, it can be different. Okay, and one molecule of tripeptide are produced three amino acids when it's hydrolyzed. And a student is asked to identify the amino acid from the hydro hydrolysis of three different tripeptides A, B, C using the paper chromatography. So this is uh, the very simple uh, drawing uh, on the paper chromatography. So we have the <coughs> compound A, B, C. And this spot A, B and C is has the hydrolyzed samples of tripeptides, means there will be uh, amino acids. And another one is a solvent front, means uh, we put the paper chromography into the uh, solvent, the mobile phase. Let the solvent, the mobile phase run until this solvent front, then it stops. We just take it out okay, from the, uh, the chamber. Okay, this one we will discuss later, right? How we identify that, uh, uh, this uh, all this amino acid. Okay, so from here, um, the paper chromatography we can see uh, how many amino acids uh, that being separated. For the sample A, we know that it must be three different amino acid because we have three different spots and three different uh, retention um, uh, uh, factor. And for the B, we just get two spots, means the two compounds. So it's quite clear that B, it just has two amino acids inside. And C, it's very clear that uh, it has three spots, but uh, this one uh, is uh, a bit overlap here. So because the retention factor is too close, right? They, it cannot separate well. Okay, we'll discuss this later. Okay, so means uh, for A, uh, we know uh, it's going to have three amino acids. B, two amino acids. C, it's going to have three amino acids. Okay, so this is how to calculate the retention factor or the RF value. So it's the distance traveled by the amino acid spots over the distance traveled by the solvent front. Means uh, we're going to use this distance over this distance. Uh, so for example, for the for this spot, we know that it's around 1 cm. So it's just 1 over 7. So we know that it's actually lysine. And uh, how we know are uh, because uh, later it will give a table, right? So it's about 0 0.14. So 1 over 7 is near to this value. So we know that it's lysine. And for the second compound, we know that okay, this one is about 3.7 or 3.5 okay, over 7. So we know that it's going to be uh, the tryptophan. Uh, and okay, we based on this uh, value, right? Tryptophan is about zero point five, right? So three point something over seven, right? So it's around uh, zero point five, the nearest one. And uh, <clears throat> the others one, so it's about five point five over seven. So we will get leucine, right? So five point five over seven is near to uh, this value, 0 0.7 something. So we know that inside the uh, <coughs> the A, the sample A, is going to have three different amino acid, and these are the three amino acid, right? Okay, so uh, let's get back to the part A. Suggest why the sample is applied to chromatograph free paper using the thin capillary tube rather than dropping pipette. So thin capillary tube, uh, it can 
give a very tiny spot okay like the figure 2.1 shown so when we use the capillary tube we can control the spotting area and it's a uh, later is have a better separation if we use dropping by bed because the dropping by bed it might give a larger spot here later when we do the separation it might not be really nice right so we try to let this spot uh, as small as possible or uh, it's being controlled well right so that's why we use the thin capillary tube rather than dropping by bed Okay, so the answer is the application of the hydrolyzed sample is more controlled. Right. B. Suggest why it is necessary to spray a developing agent. Uh, normally for paper chromatography, uh, we use iodine as the developing agent. Uh, we just spray some iodines uh, on the paper. So uh, it will be colored. Means uh, it just to make the amino acid visible. Normally, amino acid, some, uh, some of that, uh, most of that is uh, invisible. So we need something to, to let it be uh, visible, right? So no, we will spray some iodine uh, or the developing agent, right? Okay, so this one is done. Uh, use data in the table 2.1. Identify the amino acid in the tripeptide A. So I told you already, uh, there are the uh, okay, means uh, these are the three amino acids inside the A, right? So all from the I value. Part D suggests why hydrolyzed sample of B produce two spots. Okay, because it just uh, it just have two amino acids only. Right. So it means uh, the three amino acid it must have two same amino acid okay two of the three amino acids they are the same okay part e two of the spots from the hydrolyzed sample c uh, overlaps okay state the reason for the overlap okay, because the spot of two amino acids have the similar rf value actually this one is the uh, uh, it's, it's not for for me it's not really a better answer Obviously, it's different RF value. Why they have different RF value? Uh, it because the interactions uh, between the the amino acid, the two amino acid, uh, with the mobile phase and stationary phase, they are quite close. That's why it kind of uh, have a bit overlap uh, because of the interaction is quite close. But somehow, uh, this is the answers in the marking scheme, right? So uh, it because of RF value. Okay, part two, suggest an improvement to the method that would allow overlapping spot to be distinguished clearly. Uh, this one is very easy to solve. Uh, we just need to use a longer paper. When we use a longer paper, then the solvent front, we can adjust to a, la a longer distance. So longer distance, then it can uh, separate further. So that's why a longer stationary phase or longer chromatography paper Okay, it can use okay for a better separation or we can actually use different solvent because different solvent they might have different interactions and they can separate well okay i hope you understand this question thank you